My name's uh, Flight Lieutenant Chantelle Hartley. I'm an ACO on the C-130H uh, Hercules and I work at RAF Base Richmond. An ACO on the C-130H pretty much uh, directs the aircraft where to go, it's just uh, A to B. We look after um, navigation, GPS, INU systems and, uh, and also fuel policies and endurance kind of calculations while airborne as well. A lot of things in a tactical mission will change airborne and it's, it's totally up to the ACO being the mission commander to figure out what needs doing, um, where we need to go, how we need to get there, what we have to avoid and then it's going to be the, the uh, ACO's responsibility to then convey that to the pilots and say um, direct them here, direct them there, say don't do that, we need to be at this level. It's pretty much uh, all the ACO's job to direct the aircraft. I grew up in uh, Catherine, which is RAF based Tyndall up there, and that's where I spent all of my childhood. My father is actually in the Air Force as well. He didn't have anything to do with flying, but it certainly had a lot to do with me joining. It is a personal choice on what you want to do. Most people obviously want to go pilot first, that's, that's just how it is. But when you've actually spent time on the aircraft and you get to look at what the positions are, some things more than others interest different people. So for me, instead of the flying, the hands-on components, I loved I loved maps, so that was my focus from the start. After our initial ACO training, we actually got streamed towards the different types of aircraft, and my preference obviously was the C-130. Once you get to the squadron, you go through your basic conversion onto the aircraft type, and then once, you've, uh, once you're qualified at that, that's when you continue on You'll start off as what we call a baby ACO and you've just got the, the basic training and you'll just do the strategic flights from A to B. But as you uh, consolidate your skills, you'll start to, to do more and more courses. So you'll do your airborne ops course, which will then involve your airdrop and, and your dirt strip landings and, and all the interesting stuff that everybody joins for. So once you do get more proficient, that's when you do start doing the very exciting stuff. So with our flight planning, we've got to find out where we're going, where we're leaving from, what we're doing along the way. Um, we make sure we've got, for shorter flights, it's just basic stuff like weather, flight plans, making sure you have all the accurate approach plates. Um, you're pretty much doing the majority of the planning for that mission. Um, that's the ACO's role. Once you, uh, once you get into the more in-depth missions, um, specifically form flights where there's more than one aircraft there is a lot of planning involved in that for uh, for safety reasons for for tactical reasons when we're not doing uh, flights from a to b carrying cargo our other roles include um, airdropping cargo as well so when it's in an environment where the aircraft can't land but equipment needs or people need to be put in a certain location where we can't land we airdrop it out of the back of the aircraft or even now uh, we do have hay dropping where you fly extremely low and just and punch it out the back so there's there's a lot of that that's also used in uh, not just wartime but also in humanitarian operations as well so flood relief and and to get medical supplies and food out there most recently was the uh, padang assist so over there for the earthquake assistance yeah we're based out of Jakarta and constantly flying up to Padang to, to provide them with the humanitarian relief that they need. We do a lot a lot of rewarding stuff especially in the Middle East I guess knowing that you're playing a role in, in helping things happen is is very rewarding as well. My most interesting uh, story from the Middle East was actually more unexpected. I was uh, doing an exercise here in Australia in Townsville and I got a call saying look um, we need an aircraft immediately to uh, to escort the uh, the Prime Minister around Afghanistan and it needs to be done tomorrow. So I was asked to do it as the ACO and they flew me back down from uh, from Townsville. It was actually before Christmas. So it was, it was leaving, I think, two weeks before Christmas and we didn't know whether we'd be back or not. So we left to go over there and, uh, and it was quite interesting that over there you have a lot of shadow aircraft that are working when there's a VIP such as the Prime Minister. And, uh, and, it's, and it's a good experience being able to work with people like that. Over there we get to see uh, a lot of the famous people that come over to uh, support the troops, get to see them and, uh, and seeing a lot of the VIPs is fantastic as well. So we did, it, we did end up making it back before Christmas, we got back on Christmas Eve so they do do a lot for us. Yeah it's, it's pretty exciting stuff. I hate to say but it isn't a girls girls kind of kind of job, you know, you do have to be able to get yourself a little bit dirty and um, and to be able to put up with a lot of pressure. Um, you can't crack under stuff like that, there is a lot of responsibility. And hanging out with uh, with another five, at least five guys all day, every day is, uh, it is quite an interesting thing as a female, but you get very used to it. You know, you, you're all just people and, and we all do have a lot of the same um, personality traits. So. As, as you're selected, um, you're pretty much guaranteed to get along with everybody anyway, so it's not really a problem being male or female.
It is easy to complain about how much you're away when you're away all the time, but there are a lot of perks that come with this job. We are, we are away in uh, a lot of good places a lot, of, a lot of the time. The Air Force is definitely something I'd recommend. Defence in general, yes, but the Air Force most definitely. Um, my little brother's looking into it at the moment and I can give him nothing but, but good words. I love it. I just, I've always loved it and will always love it.